welcome to my channel. My name is Brianne Beebe. I'm a high school math teacher and I have been creating YouTube videos for teachers for the past two years. So for YouTube, I like to plan out what my next video is going to be, when it's going up, what I plan to do for it, if it's going to be a vlog, a sit down video, etc. So after my last video, the next video that was supposed to go up was a vlog about setting up my classroom which didn't happen. And then after that, I was hoping to do a vlog of the first week of school. That did not happen either. So I'm just going to do a big general life update right now. Over the past summer at my school, there was a lot of construction. My classroom was supposed to be part of that. Turned out it didn't have to be, but I did have to take everything off of my walls to prepare for that. So my walls when I walked in were completely bare, which is frustrating because I like lots of bright colors, makes me happy, makes my students happy. I had asked if they could paint my room over the summer, which quite understandably they were busy and they did not get to it, which is fine, but it just put a damper on setting up the classroom and getting ready. We also have this week of professional development before school starts, and when I say week, I mean Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I went in a week ahead of that to check on my classroom to see if I could start getting things set up and put together because that's usually what I do. But I walk in and some desks for students are in there. My teacher desk is still in the hallway. The floor had been waxed and what they described as the construction project that was happening in my classroom looked like it hadn't even been attempted. So I just walked out, did not start anything. And now at this point, I can't remember if I went in the Monday before professional development started or not. I think I did, but I got in touch with our person from the district overseeing the construction. He said that um, the construction project took a different turn, so they didn't have to do the construction in my classroom that they had planned. So that was all great, and I was so overwhelmed with the amount of things I had to do to get ready to start the school year, so I made a list and prioritize the things that absolutely had to be done. I had to get student desks set up in groups. I had to organize everything that students need on a regular basis, like the interactive notebook caddies, calculators, all that good stuff. I had to get my teacher desk set up and ready to go and any organizational items that I have in my classroom. So I got all of that done first. I also had a dilemma as far as decorating my classroom. I like bright colored content related posters in different spots and I'm now realizing how much I actually referenced them because I did not put them back up. Since my room wasn't painted, I spoke to a colleague of mine. She said that the previous summer she asked for paint in her classroom and they got around to it in January during the school year. So I'm still kind of unsure if I should just put stuff up on my walls and deal with it in January or if I should wait. But I'm really leaning toward just getting that stuff up because it's kind of difficult not having an accessible bulletin board and just the posters and things that I do reference. Another thing that I was stressed out about was I did not have my schedule yet. So in May, we get a paper from our administration outlining the courses that we're expected to have the following year with, of course, the disclaimer that things can change over the summer. So I was looking at three preps. I had math, SAT prep, geometry, and pre-calc and calc. I was so excited to have three preps because last year I had five, and quite honest, that was a nightmare. Then in the middle of the summer, I got an email because I'm working with a new co-teacher this year, and the email was addressed to this person, but with their schedule and what courses they were teaching with who so that they could get in touch and plan over the summer and everything and I'm listed as teaching general geometry which I wasn't expected to be teaching and I kind of got ridiculously stressed out about it. It was not such a big deal but I'm just looking at okay so now I have four preps instead of three. That's more work than I was expecting and had I known in May that I would still be teaching this course I would have started adjusting things then and so I'm a little bit aggravated by that still now that I think about it but I was worried once I saw four preps what if they give me five preps again and what if they give me another AIS class with 
middle school kids because that was the part that I really had trouble with last year. I'm just not that person that should be working with middle school students. It's just not for me. So I mentally and quietly agonized over that all summer. We did not get our schedule until the day before professional development began. I did not have that AIS course. Turns out, and I did not realize this until last week, I do have five preps because pre-calculus and calculus are two separate courses. And I knew that before, but didn't conceptualize them as separate preps. Anyway, so now this year I'm planning for four preps per semester, which is much better. But it's still a lot of work because pre-calc and calc is a brand new course for me, so I'm trying to figure it out for the first time. And I'm honestly just having a hard time with having the confidence to teach that just because the woman that's been teaching it for the past, I don't even know how many years, she's just legendary and she is retiring at the end of the year. So we slowly started shifting, me taking over some of her courses and this was the next phase, but I just, I don't know. I'm just having trouble adjusting, I guess, not in a bad way. It's going to be fine in the end. It's just taking some time. And with that being said, having four preps is a lot of work still, just like five was, but in a different way. And I have not had the time to be able to film anything in my classroom. And I'm honestly starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable about filming in my classroom. More and more students have found my YouTube channel, which doesn't really bother me. It's just, I don't know. I have never spoken to it about other teachers or administration. We have new administration anyway, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it right now, so maybe future videos will be filmed in my classroom. They might not be. I'm not really sure. So I intended to film my first week of school, and that clearly did not happen. I simply do not have the time with four preps, one of them being brand new. I'm just trying to get back on track. But everything that I did for that first week of school, I talked about in my Insta stories. So if you want to know about that, head over to Instagram. It's in my highlights. So I've shared in a blog post, which I'll link below, a method that I have for batch lesson planning so that I always stay a full week ahead. And I've done this, I think, three years now. And I know that this does not happen for at least the first month of school. It takes a while for me to get into the swing of things and actually get on pace where I'm staying a full week ahead. But I forget that at the beginning of the year and I'm so hard on myself about stuff like that. So I think just today I finally finished planning out this entire week. It's Wednesday, by the way. So I have my plans through Friday finally done. Still have to make copies. Still have to make a quiz though. And I need to be planning for the following week. It's also been rough because we usually have Jewish holidays in September and this year the first one is on September 30th. So we have not had any days off yet. But the payoff is looking in October. We have off for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Columbus Day, and then we have two professional development days. So we don't have a single full week for any part of October. So hallelujah, because having four days to plan for as opposed to five, it's a game changer. So hopefully I will be back on track with that soon. But I will say I've also been working on kind of a big project that makes it so that working on my lesson plans takes a little bit longer. If you followed me for a while, I had a blog on Blogger for years and years, since 2012. And I was part of, still am, but like not frequently a part of the math Twitter blogosphere community and so we just had all these great math teacher blogs I mean they still got to be out there but we would just share things freely and I shared every page I created for the interactive notebook for free on my blog and it was a free download and it was great and then I took transform your resources last December with Casey Morris and learned about copyright law and it turns out that the pages that I made for my interactive notebook because I used sources from the internet and our textbook, I was actually breaking the law unknowingly. So I had to take everything down. But I've been working really hard to take everything from the interactive notebook and make it my own so that I can put it out there again. The thing is though, just, I mean, being completely honest, I'm putting a lot, a lot more work into this than I did initially. 
So I'm putting it up on Teachers Pay Teachers at a cost because I'm doing a lot of work here. So they are going to be bundled and they are on my TPT store now that just happened last night. So excited, could not go to sleep. But right now there's like three or four pages up and the bundle is the lowest price it's ever going to be. So if you want to get in on the full year bundle, I'll have it linked down below. If not, that's cool too. Interactive notebooks are not for everyone and I'll link below my interactive resources on my blog. One of them though was a video that I made about um, things to think about before you implement interactive notebooks in your classroom. With that being said, if you have any questions about interactive notebooks, please leave them in a comment below because I will be recording a video on um, questions that people have asked me about interactive notebooks. So in terms of other things that are going on, Russell is 14 months old now. He's doing great. He's so smart. He thinks every animal is a cat, which is hilarious. My kids this year are amazing and I just look forward to working with them throughout the school year. And this year I'm a co-coordinator for our school's PBIS team and Sometimes it's a little bit stressful because I feel like there's a lot of stuff getting piled on, but I'm enjoying it and honestly, I see a difference in the school. There's so many good things happening and it is a lot more of a positive place to be in and just today is realizing how much I love where I work and the colleagues that I have are amazing and it took me some time, especially because I do not leave my classroom, but I feel so completely comfortable where I work. So to sum everything up, I'd say, yeah, it's back to school season. Um, we've been back for almost three full weeks now and it's great. It's a blast, but it's a lot of work and it's stressful and it's tiring. So I'm actually really surprised I made it through this video without someone coming home. That's like a first. It's also a reason why I've not been able to do videos is because I'm sharing my home right now with my parents and my sister because they've been displaced they're waiting on it's a whole situation but they're waiting on something to be able to go through with the purchase of their home and you know fingers crossed things work out so keep your fingers crossed that things go through a little bit sooner rather than later and that's all I have for this video so if you have anything specifically that you want to see on my channel let me know and as always thanks for watching